Slimehouse TV, myself Theo Kane, and today I'm hitting you with something a little bit more impromptu than usual. A couple of weeks ago on an episode of my new show Toy Talk Tuesday, I spoke about how at the end of last year I went to Blackpool with my friend Lee toy hunting and I picked up some stuff that I was going to feature in a future episode. Well that episode is today and the stuff that I picked up were these two model kits. Now today's video is going to be a bit more rough and ready than what you're used to seeing from me. I'm on a strict deadline to get this episode made and I'll tell you why a bit later on but first of all I just wanted to tell you a bit about these model kits and what I'm going to be doing in today's video. So both these kits were made in the early 90s by a British company called Halcon and we've got the City Hunter Predator from Predator 2 and a Sylvester Stallone Judge Dredd. How cool is that? As you can also see, they've both already been started, half painted and put together and then left. And when I saw them, I just had to bring them back. I couldn't leave them there. I felt like they had so much potential. If you watch this show, you know that I like to do a lot of painting and modelling. And these things felt very on brand for Slimehouse and all figured out. And something that not only I would enjoy finishing, but also something that would make a cool video. So I'm going to get to both of these models eventually, but in today's episode, I'm going to focus solely on the Predator model kit. Now, as you can see, someone has already started painting him and they haven't even done a bad job, but I really want to start fresh with this guy, start over and really make him my own. So I'm going to crack on with priming him using my new bad boy airbrush kit and ideally I would have stripped this guy down completely and took all the paint off him but he's way too big to fit in my sonic cleaning machine unless I broke him into pieces which I really don't want to do. I could have also soaked him in Dettol but it's a lengthy process and like I said I'm on a strict deadline here. So let me tell you why I love these model kits so much. Here in the UK in the early 90s, we used to have a chain of stores called Beaties. It sold stuff like Warhammer, Airfix, train sets, miniature vehicle replicas and toys, and they also sold model kits of characters from movies. And I remember going in with my parents, seeing the kits and being fully in awe of them. They'd have them set up in glass cabinets. This is the first time that I ever saw a Xenomorph, or a Facehugger, and a Predator like this one. And I can remember it as clear as day, how fixated I was looking at them, and how incredible they looked to my little six-year-old brain. That's how a monster would look in real life, I remember thinking. Up until that point, the only time I'd seen a model of a monster in person was in action figure form. But these felt like a whole level above that. The kind of toy that a greasy old rocker would have on his shelf in the same room that he kept his guitars. The kind of thing that you'd see displayed in a biker bar or a tattoo studio. A toy that wasn't for kids. A model of a gnarly monster from a movie I wasn't even old enough to have seen yet and that made it even cooler. This was the early 90s. It was the era of Doom and Space Hulk, Dark Horse Comics, Total Recall, Terminator 2, Robocop and 2000 AD and all that dope shit. I loved it all then and I've grown to love it even more ever since. These are the gritty sci-fi and action movies and comics that made me who I am today. And these Halcon kits that were painted up and displayed in beaties were my first introduction to it. So I really want to do this thing justice as a piece that I can display in my house and look back on and be proud of. I'm just hoping that the fact that I've got to kind of speed paint it to get it finished in time doesn't have me disappointed with the end result. Now the reason that I'm in such a rush to get this video out is that this Thursday me and a couple of the boys are off to Edinburgh in Scotland for a little weekend away, a little boys trip to film a couple cool things for Slimehouse and today's Sunday and we leave in just a couple of days and I've got so much to do before I go, I'm so busy but this year I really wanted to hammer the YouTube and bring out regular videos every week and so I don't break that schedule, I have to make sure that there's a video out on Friday so I gotta get this thing fully painted and filmed filmed and edited and exported and uploaded to YouTube all in time for when I'm back. And as you can imagine, that's a proper tight deadline because I'm only giving myself a couple of days to do it all. And ideally, I'd want to spend a couple of weeks painting this guy. Also, there's nothing making me make a video about this Predator now. It's my own fault. I could have done something more simple, but sometimes I just like to go with the flow and film the video that's exciting to me in that moment. And it just so happens to be this video is the one that I wanted to do. So I've already got myself to blame. I'm just going to have to get on with it. 
so color scheme wise i've decided that i'm not going to go with the same as the predator that's on the box like i said before this is the city hunter from predator 2 but i really wanted to do my own thing with it also i don't have any of them orangey colors that i can use for the same type of skin pattern as the predator that's in that movie and i don't have time to order any new ones so as my brother slacky would say who is ironically a huge fan of predator i'm just gonna have to piss with the prick that i've got and use whatever colors i've got available I also think it's cool to not always stick to a brief, customise things in your own way and make your own version of it, make it something that's unique in and to itself. So I suppose this one is going to look a bit of a mix between Predator 1 and Predator 2 and then my own version. So I've been painting this thing for two days now. Just painting the cloaking netting all over his body was super time consuming. That took like a whole evening. But I think it's worth it because it's looking really nice so far. I feel like I've got a really nice gradient on his skin with a couple of different tones and some heavy black and then lots of dots and freckling and patterns and markings all over him. After that, I then used a flesh tone coloured ink just to even everything out a bit. And at first I was going to make his armour like a copper bronzy kind of colour like the Predator 2 City Hunter. But with the colours that I've got it started to look a bit too gold and a bit regal. So instead I went with a classic Predator 1 gunmetal grey and I'm much more happier with it. So I've given that a wash and now it looks nice and worn and weathered. It looks like he's missing one of his studs off his belt, it must have snapped off somewhere over the years, so I'm just making him a new one out of a cocktail stick, toy polloi style. Also this predator's holding the skull and a spine of a freshly hunted human, so I'm covering his hands and his blades in this Warhammer paint called Blood for the Blood God. It's a technical paint and it looks like really gloopy, chunky, fresh blood. It's got a real nice glaze to it, it looks really wet. And I want this predator to look like he's proper just fucking jucked someone, Dark Horse comic style and ripped them to pieces. And this blood for the blood god is so satisfying to use, you can blob it on, you can flick it with a toothbrush and it looks perfect. It's also good for covering up any imperfections or anything that you're not happy with and there's lots of that with this model. So I'm really thankful that I decided to go with this blooded version. I'm going to be sticking him to his base soon, so I've got his base here. Now this looks like it's originally supposed to have a Predator 2 sign that sticks on it, but it hasn't got that in the box and to be honest I think it looks a bit whack so I'm not even bothered. So I'll give that a prime and get it dry brushed like a brownie bronze kind of colour like the Predator ship and then that'll be ready for him to stand on. Okay, so that's the end of day two. Tomorrow is Tuesday, so I've literally got one day to finish his face, tidy him all up, and then edit this entire video. What the fuck am I thinking? Okay, final day, final stretch. I need full concentration on this one because I can't be messing the face up. It's got to look as on point as possible. So I'm starting with a bit of light airbrushing. I've got an idea in mind for the patterns on his head. And I've also got to fix a load of these predlock tentacles that have snapped off. So I've got to sort them as well. Something that's really been annoying me as well is that his hand and his sword, the big blade goes right across his face and obscures the area and makes it hard to get in with a brush. So I'm going to have to snap that off and then glue it back on after. So now that that's out of the way, I can start doing some fine details on the face. I'm going to paint his mouth a nice fleshy pink tone, make it really wet looking. What I'm doing now is layering up the paint on his teeth and tusks, painting it on really thin and watered down so that they're not just solid white. I want them to look like they're actually part of his mouth. Now for this next bit, I'm going to do the patterns on his head. I'm going to do the eyes and all the little fine details and I'm going to need full concentration. Also, check the state of this brush. Look at that shit. I don't even know if I'm going to be able to paint the face with this fucking thing and I've got no other brushes in my house. I really should order some new brushes, but like I've said a hundred times in this video already, I don't have the time to order them and wait for them to come now. Speaking of ordering though, I've actually created a new way that you can help me here on Slime House. I'm going to put the link in the description below, but basically I've created an Amazon wish list. Now most of the stuff on there is catered towards these kind of creative videos, but there's lots of things on there that will really help me out if you're feeling generous. 
The Patreon money really does help, but if you want to do a little extra, there's stuff on there that's cheap, there's stuff on there that's a bit more expensive, but if there's anything on there that you want to get me, it really will go a long way, and I really do appreciate it. I'll also make sure that you get a shout out in a future video, so if you want to check it out, the link's in the description. Okay, back to the Predator. Boom! So that's his head pretty much done. As you can see, I didn't go with the same kind of markings on his head as the version that's on the box. Firstly, because I wanted to make it look a bit more like the OG Predator, the Pred 1 Predator. And secondly, I honestly don't think I'd be able to pull off that kind of pattern that the City Hunter has. I'm much better at working with dots than trying to draw real neat, intricate lines. I know my own skill level, and I know how long it would take me if I was going to try and pull off that pattern and do something like that, and I just don't have the time right now. So instead, I decided to go with the dots. So what I'm going to do now is cover all the skin parts of the head with an ink wash so it blends into the rest of the body. I really don't want to because I'm scared that I might mess it up, but I need to do it in order for the head not to look a completely different colour to the body. Obviously, I'm really hoping this doesn't mess it up, and it could do, but it needs to be done, so wish me luck. And there we have it all finished. Somehow I did it. I really had to speed paint this one to get it all done. It's not as perfect as I would have liked it to be, but I'm way more happy with the end result than I expected. And I'm just glad I got it all done in time for this video. Also, my friend That's Vile taught me how to make this really stringy slime blood, which I think works perfect and really makes the skull and spine look like it's been freshly torn out of a victim. This is the first time in a long time that I've done anything like this on this scale of modelling, so I hope that you like it. Let me know what you think in the comments below. I'm also going to get to that Judge Dredd at some point in the future, whether that's going to be a video or whether it's something that I just sit down and paint and put it on my Instagram. I'll know closer to the time, but I'd also really like to have a go at some of these other early 90s model kits, so if you've got any that you're trying to get rid of, please let me know on Instagram. If you enjoyed this video today, as always, please don't forget to give it a like. And if you haven't already, subscribe to the channel and binge the back catalogue because there's loads of stuff like this on this channel. As I mentioned before, I've now got an Amazon wish list. So if there's anything on there that you feel like you want to get me, if you're feeling generous, if you want to help support me and the channel, then feel free to browse the wish list. I really appreciate it. It really does help. And if you want to support me even more, you can also head over to patreon.com forward slash slimehouse TV. And for as little as a dollar a month, you can become a slime renegade and help me make this channel bigger and better than ever. And if you can't do any of that, just give this video a share. Sharing is caring. Show it to somebody that might like it. Post it on a Facebook group. Post it on a Reddit forum. Anything like that. I just want to spread the word of slimehouse as much as possible. So that's me done. I'm going to get this video exported. In the meantime, I'm Theo Kane. This has been Slimehouse TV. I'll catch you next week for Toy Talk Tuesday. And until the next video, I'm gone. Boom!